couple of housekeeping things. It hasn't really changed. I'm just clarifying some things. First off, I want to say thank you everybody for selling the HUD homes. They've been great deals for um, your clients and they've all been selling really well. I went down to Boise and did some training down there. Um, HUD ha or BLB, there's a lot of homes that fall out of escrow and HUD is really watching it. And so if the same mistakes are made numerous times by the same agent, they're going to, number one, make, make the agent won't be able to write offers. And if numerous um, mistakes happen within an office, they'll take the privilege away from an office being able to write offers. So it's really important. I'm going to give like three different examples. And all three of them happen in our office. So I just want to make sure that everybody is clear on the procedures. Number one, when you write a HUD offer, if your offer is accepted, you have 48 hours to get the paperwork to BLB once you receive that notification. So the first thing is we had an agent write an offer. When you, even though it is electronic, I think a lot of people, what they do is they sit down and they write the electronic offer. When you do that, you have to have your buyer sign that contract right then, and you have to have the earnest money check. The reason why the check is made out to HUD or, and the buyer's name, so HUD or Joe Smith, the reason why that is is if your offer isn't accepted, you can, that earnest money check can go back to the buyer. Most agents are waiting until they receive the confirmation, and that's not the right procedure. When you submit the offer electronically, a button comes up on top, and it says, print contract and also print your confirmation. You can print that full contract out right then. The buyer should sign it in front of you. What happens is, is the recently we had somebody write an offer, their offer was accepted, and the agent then said, oh my God, I got 48 hours, and the buyer was out of state. So they said, I can't get it. So luckily they called HUD, and HUD did give them an extension. They won't always do that. If there was a backup offer in place, they would take the next offer. If your paperwork does not re get there in 48 hours, they go to a backup. The only saving grace was that there wasn't a backup, so they gave them another day to get the paperwork. So make sure when you submit it electronically, the buyer is in front of you, they sign the contract, and you have your earnest money check. Otherwise, do not write the offer. Um, the second thing that's happening is um, overbidding. HUD prices the homes really, really well. So there's a lot of overbidding, which is great. The buyer has to, if they're doing an FHA loan, the buyer has to have the amount in cash. So if the house is listed for 106 and you write it for 110, your buyer has to have the $4,000 in cash. So what's happening is, is people write the offer and they go, oh, I didn't know I needed cash. So then they fall out. So that's the other mistake. So the um, so make sure they have, they know they have the cash. Here's what happens. The, the, the other item we're going to talk about is um, a lot of times, like let's say a house is listed at 106, and the agent goes, "Well, I know this house is worth more." And my buyer's not doing FHA. They're doing 100% conventional. They're doing USDA. You need to look on every listing. I buy in the private remarks or even in the comments that I put down, if there's any escrow repairs, we had somebody write an offer, um, I, I put in the disclosures what's wrong with the house. This particular house, I said there was a $400 repair bid for peeling paint. So an agent in our office wrote an offer, the buyer was doing a VA loan, they had the appraisal, what do you think the VA appraiser called out? <laughs> peeling paint. <laughs> So the eight, here's the thing, HUD will not make any repairs to property. HUD will not allow buyers to make repairs prior to closing to any property. The only way to make a repair to a HUD home is if you're doing an FHA loan, the money can be held in at closing and repaired after closing. So what happens is, is luckily I think that buyer was able to change financing and did FHA, but it was pretty clear that the disclosure states on the MLS that there was a repair bid for peeling paint. So it's not that your buyer, agents call me all the time, and they go, oh, my buyer's qualified, my buyer's qualified. Your buyer might be, that house may not qualify for what your buyer is able to buy. So either look on the HUD website, look under the disclosures, make sure that there's no repairs that need to be made to the house. And if there is, ask your buyer, what kind of loan are you doing? Because if the lender is gonna require the repairs, the house will not qualify. 
that is like the number one thing that houses fall out. Um, the other is like on a USDA loan. We had one and there was a plumbing repair. There was a plumbing leak. So they were doing a USDA. And so USDA wanted the water to be turned on. Well, if there's a water leak, HUD will not allow the water to be turned on. So, the, you know, it went nowhere. But if the agent would have read that before that there's a water leak and knew that USDA was going to require an appraisal. If you're doing an FHA loan, there's no appraisal required. There's an FHA loan in place and the lender can use the FHA loan. So the repairs can be financed, end of story. So it gets really hard on HUD houses if you're doing anything besides FHA. The house has to really be in great shape in order for it to qualify for either USDA or um, VA or any other kind of financing. I'm trying to think what the so third one. I do. I try to put it, if there's room in the, in the description of the house, I put it there. I put it in the private remarks. I always put on the disclosure, I always put on the attachments. I put a copy of the disclosure addendum. So look at that house before. And then if you go on HUD Home Store, on their website, they have all the exact information. So it just, we have a lot of them, you know, falling out for the same reasons over and over and over again. Um, so you have to just really look at the house, make sure it qualifies for what your buyer is needing to do for their loan. Because it's not that the buyer, you have a, you know, a great buyer. The other, that's the other thing is a lot of times agents will go, well, my buyer's going to do 100% conventional and the house is listed for 110. I know it's worth 115, so I'm going to write 115 and get a new appraisal. Well, they go to get the new appraisal, and like I said, that's, you know, there's a plumbing leak. Well, they can't reappraise it to do the USDA loan because the water. So you kind of like go in this like vicious circle. So it's like, you know, don't overbid unless you have cash. Don't overbid because you think you're going to challenge the appraisal and get a better one because if there's any repairs, then, you know, they're not going to let that happen because USDA isn't going to loan on a house that doesn't have a water heater. They're going to go, we need a water heater. And then the agent calls me and says, can we put in a water heater? No. Well, had to put in a water heater? No. The paperwork says there's no water heater. You knew that going into it. So it's happening a lot. So I, I don't mean to keep like beating a dead horse, but really just look at the disclosures. If you have any questions, ask me, call me, um, and um, you know, hopefully we'll get them through. The third thing is, is there's a new form that um, it's called the RE41. On the HUD contract, um, the HUD contract is you know federal. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, so what it doesn't all comply with Idaho. So Idaho State came up with the form, the RE41. The three, three, the three things that HUD's purchase and sale don't address, number one is the legal description of the house. HUD just has an address. So the RE41, you put in the legal description of the house. The second thing is agency agreement, which Marie went over. The HUD contract doesn't have that, so the RE41 states agency agreement. And the third thing is... Um, the responsible broker, which would be obviously Keller Williams. Um, so you would put in the responsible broker. So that form now has to be filled out with all um, HUD contracts and submitted to our office in order to be compliant with Idaho State, not necessarily with any other state. Okay, thank you. And you know the wonderful thing about that, this is that we have somebody here, there's only a couple people in town that, that actually live HUD homes. And, and Kay continually gets approved because she ha follows all the guidelines. And so when she can tell us how we can do it and how we can serve our clients, it just really is, is, is good because from what you were telling me too, is they are cracking down a little bit. They are. They're, that was the number one thing stressed in Boise and I don't want our office, you know, to lose our privileges. Um, and like I said, all three examples I gave you were things that happened literally in the last probably six weeks and we're all in our office. I mean, it's happening in other offices too, but you know, it's even more so in-house with them. Well, you actually said that, that they will take away the privileges. Yes, they'll start with, the yes, start with the agent. Yes, start with the agent. So they actually, if you continually turn in uh, bids and contracts that are not by the guidelines that have been put in there, they actually will take them off the, the list. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah. Pardon? For well, we'll be on Saturdays, are they counting? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Started at 48 hours. Yeah. 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 And and this came directly from HUD. This was a VLB. So this is this is a serious issue. And so with that, with Kay being able to um, give us the latest, uh, it, it's definitely a benefit for serving your clients.
And you do workshops every once in a while, and you do training. So yes, you came. Yeah. Well, I'm so again, you know, again, when you see these things, you know, I know opening emails is a pain, but when you see these things, you see it on a calendar. She will continually keep us updated as to what HUD is requiring. She has the direct line to the government. Okay, I won't say any more about that. <laughs> any questions? Other than this document right here, okay. Yeah. Just that one. The blue brochure. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. The blue brochure. Yeah. And if you represent the buyer, a buyer's representation. Or yeah, I'm yes. in the right yeah. 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 Those are mine. Sorry. I just want to make sure. Yeah, no, I meant I thought they meant that goes to HUD. Yeah, buyer's representation agreement, the blue brochure, and now uh, the RE41. That's new, correct. And that might, I don't know, I have it. I don't know if it goes with foreclosures, too. I know it goes yeah, with HUD. It, it, it's a new requirement that HUD, or HUD is required. Correct. So thank you. Any questions? Anybody else have any questions? Uh, the earnest money. Yes. What, what is the earnest money on that? Anything over fifty thousand dollars in the purchase price is a thousand dollars. Anything under fifty thousand is um, five hundred. Earnest money check always went out to the word HUD, the word OR, and then your buyer's name. And like I said, it's also because if you send it to HUD and the transaction doesn't go through, they can send that check back. But mostly it's, so when you write the offer, if your offer isn't accepted, it can just be returned. Highlight it, underline, I can't tell you, nine times out of ten, I'll send the buyer to the bank and the bank, and they said, okay, and I'll even write it out, how I want it made out. And the buyer will come back and the earnest my check will be made out to HUD. And the cashiers will tell them, well, you don't need your name on it because your name is in the remittance who was made by it. No, you need it in both spots. Has a requirement. 